So recently it seems like everyone has been talking about this YouTuber named iDubbbz, real name Ian, and his recent controversy. And you have a very divided outlook on the whole situation when it comes to the internet. I've never really talked about this guy because I didn't really know about his career, but now I do and this is a very interesting situation. But to really understand his story I have to take you back to almost a decade ago when this man was considered a premiere feature on the platform. Originally he used to always come out in this guy Filthy Frank's videos and eventually Ian went on to make quite the name for himself with his Content Cop series where he called out different people on the internet in a comedic way. He really pushed the boundaries when it came to making politically incorrect commentary. At this time, which was around 2015 to 2017, iDubbbz could be described as an edgy YouTuber. I'm gay. Any last words, Keemstar? Drum Alert Nation now over 1,386,000. And this was very popular at the time on YouTube was to basically make anti-SJW content and him and H3H3 gained massive fan bases from doing so while also clowning on other random internet people. Their careers actually draw a lot of parallels in their totality. Now at the time I wasn't really watching YouTube, I had just gotten into college so it just wasn't something I really cared about. But clearly a lot of people love this guy, I mean he was like some sort of YouTube demigod who could do no wrong in the eyes of the majority. He was insanely popular, and I guess his main draw was the fact that he was really just willing to say what a lot of people think but wouldn't dare say. This can be a very lucrative role to fill in the internet ecosystem, but these days you can't really get away with that type of activity without getting casted away to some other non-mainstream platform. And basically what happened is about five years ago in 2017, he stopped making the Content Cop series and switched to a much more tame style of video. From here, he was still making jokey comedy style content, but it was a far cry from the edge he displayed in his previous work. I want to stand up against the libtard cocks. The joke police are gonna come after you whether you're left or right, no matter who you are. They don't fucking care. They're just out for blood. They will ignore any sign of a joke. They will ignore fucking every single bit of context. And he kept it mostly safe in these new uploads. But still his audience loved him, and it wasn't really until mid-2020 when a large portion of his former followers would see the first little kink in his armor. Namely, iDubbbz would upload a video where he would express that he was perfectly fine with and even encouraged his longtime girlfriend, Anissa, to make an OnlyFans page. A section of my audience who thinks they know me, and my opinion on sex work. You can sort of see where these two will collide. With the type of audience he had cultivated up until this point, there was obviously a divide in the reaction, as many began to call him things like a simp and a cuck for this behavior. To which his reply was basically, I'm not your older edgy brother that you look up to anymore. A good amount of people are just doing the reasonable thing and just making jokes and laughing about it. But there's a whole nother group of people who feel personally devastated and betrayed. You lied to us. First of all, I'm not your fucking dad. Like, if you don't want to look up to me anymore, that's fine. I don't want you to look up to me. Now you have to understand that back when he was releasing Content Cop, his girlfriend was a big proponent in the making of the series, which makes people upset at both of them for their change in their tune. So after the OF announcement, their relationship became a bit of a running joke to his old community. From here, Ian would continue to disavow his former content multiple times. Dude, I'm like, I can't believe we literally harassed an 18 year old child uh, at her show. It's like kind of- That's a, I guess when you put it that way, is that we both used to be like edgy comedians and we were a part of the larger commentary mm -hmm. community. Mm -hmm. And as we've aged, we've realized that, uh, you know, you want to conduct yourself differently. Well, when you start, you start interacting caring. with the actual world and you're not in your bedroom creating like a, like sitting in your bedroom for 19 hours creating a hit piece on someone, right. <laughs> basically, like, right. and you actually interact with human beings, you sort of realize like that isn't really real life. Mm. <laughs> Those you. videos, like you said now, they were yeah. a hit piece and when you look back at it, you cringe at yeah. it. Absolutely. It's not something that could have been sustainable even if you wanted to. Look, if you it's, didn't change, you couldn't. you'd just be, you'd be Keemstar. From here, he would double down and continue to try and distance himself from his past, saying that he had a strong dislike for not only his old videos, but also the audience he had cultivated that made him rich and famous, basically calling them incel basement dwellers. I did not like the interactions that I had with fans. 
there were quite a few human beings that I interacted with. In person? That, yeah, in person, that just sucked. Well, they just sucked because I attracted a lot of people who sucked. Some people were, as I described earlier, were very much like antisocial, weird basement dwellers. And, and what would they say? What would they do? Things that I am certainly not gonna repeat. <laughs> so I'm talking bad words. Fringy behavior. Now this is where a majority of those old viewers really turn their back on this man, as many consider this shift in his views and personality to be disingenuous. In the words of Turkey Tom, iDubbbz essentially made a career telling edgy jokes, videos his girlfriend helped him produce, and then when it became non-mainstream to do so, he pulled the ladder up and wanted to crucify his former audience for being edgelords. And they really were not open to hearing any of that, but if you out there want to listen intently, then you need to check out Raycon. I use Raycon's everyday earbuds, well, every day, for around the last year. Whether I'm doing work at my desk, riding in the car, or working out, they are the perfect option for a premium listening experience at a great price point. Thanks to Raycon, you're paying half the price for the same, if not better quality earbuds. Meaning you can get a pair and a spare and still pay less than you would for other big name brands. With over 50,000 5 star reviews, they are a brand you can trust when it comes to audio quality. My favorite feature when it comes to the everyday earbuds is the noise isolation when I want to lock in on my workout. And conversely, the awareness mode is great for when I need to pay more attention to what's going on around me. With the custom gel tip selection, the everyday earbuds are always sitting comfortably in my ears. And I also love the convenience of being able to just throw these earbuds on my keys or even my water jug as they have a very small footprint. Raycon also offers buy now, pay later options where you can pay as low as $18 at checkout, as well as free domestic shipping. So if you are ready to buy something small with a big impact, click the link down below in the description or go to buyraycon.com slash Jamari to get 15% off your Raycon purchase. Once again, thank you Raycon for sponsoring today's video. And that kind of leads me to where we are today, as the latest arc in iDub's career has been him basically becoming the orchestrator of one of these influencer boxing events that he dubbed as the Creator Clash. After putting on a successful show last year, him and his girlfriend were working on Creator Clash 2 and invited a man named Froggy Fresh to fight. Froggy knew he was going to fight for the greater part of a year and was apparently training very hard for the event. Then around a month before they were set to fight, they announced that he was essentially banned. This created massive backlash online and you even had people like Gideon offering a $100,000 donation to charity if they would put Froggy back on the card. Because after all, the event is large for charity but still he and his wife ignored these pleas and they went on to give the dude who was supposed to fight froggy a horrible matchup all the while getting destroyed online for doing so and the important thing to acknowledge here is that idubs banned this guy froggy because he went to train with a comedian named sam hyde who iDubbbz has some deep-rooted beef with. Sam Hyde is basically one of the most successful trolls of all time, and he is a bit of an internet legend with his own cult following for also pushing the boundaries of politically incorrect humor for years. These two do not like each other after iDubbbz tried to make a documentary about Sam Hyde's private life, where Sam felt like he was basically trying to be on some slick shit to make him look bad. I was, um, I thought it'd be funny for your fans. I thought they'd like it. The whole thing? I would never do anything The to whole thing's a ruse. ...actually hurt you or upset you or make you look foolish. I would not do that. We did get duped by Sam. Uh, we didn't get pranked in quite the way we thought we were gonna get pranked. It's not easy to say that I'm like happy with the conclusion because I'm still wondering kind of what's what's real and what's fake legitimately. He definitely he definitely viewed me as a um, a tool, like yeah. a <clears throat> documentary subject, stepping stone guy that he could eviscerate with his big brain in order to make 4chan stop calling him a cuck. Yeah, that was the plan. That was his plan. And at this point, Sam has also gone on record multiple times to make fun of iDubbbz and his relationship with his wife, as well as her OnlyFans presence. Fucking Anissa. What an ugly piece of shit. But look how beat she is. Oh, nice jack-o'-lantern teeth. That's like a I can't wait to see what she looks like when she's 32. Her teeth look like a, like a pumpkin head. Like it's the Anissa Joma hole stretcher. I'm sending this to Anissa's OnlyFans. It goes directly into charity. Yeah. In response to all of this backlash, Ian would release his own response to the drama, where he would once again disavow his old content, saying that he was ashamed of who he was in the past. 
I think a lot of the content I've made has been irresponsible and misguided. And I think I've hurt a lot of people with the content I've made. With some good can come a lot of bad. And I think I've done a lot of bad. And, uh, you know, at the bare minimum, I've just put a lot of negativity out there in the world. And I'm working on not doing that. While also saying that Froggy was booted from the card because he worked with Sam Hyde and planned to make content with him in doing so. The main reason Froggy was kicked from the card was for collaborating with Sam Hyde. And, you know, for anyone who's been following the story, that's, you know, fairly obvious. Uh, Froggy has explained... Uh, you know, his side of the story multiple times. And uh, unfortunately, he's been perpetuating a narrative that it's about OnlyFans or that it's about Anissa's mom. And it, that's extremely deceptive. And so essentially, he didn't want to be involved with someone who was cool with a man who was bashing his wife and in his words, harassing them. And that's honestly very reasonable to me. But the thing is, when you made a career with the help of this woman making this edgy content clowning on people, and then you two both can't take a single joke without getting butt hurt, and also taking an opportunity away from someone in the process who had already worked very hard, it's just not a very good look. And his old audience is making sure this is known, as they basically berate him for being a massive hypocrite. I mean, some of them feel legitimately hurt by this complete 180 in a lot of his views. Like an old friend to Big Brother who changed completely. Another thing we have to watch out for is saying things like, This is sick, man. This is sick, disgusting stuff. It's not even funny. It's just disgusting. I didn't find that humorous. It's just simply repulsive. Now, if that's your genuine reaction to something, that's fine, that's your reaction. But if you're a critic, a writer, someone who has to like form valued opinions that people wanna share online, then you need to put a little bit more effort into your critiques. And I bring this all up today mainly because I find the entire situation to be very interesting. Because on one hand, I don't really think he's just necessarily grifting to the politically correct side of things. And I think he genuinely doesn't really like who he was before. But with that being said, who he was before allowed him to be rich and famous and enabled him to be making the moves he currently is today. Ultimately in this life you reap what you sow and it's not surprising his audience would react like this. I feel like most comedians would face this type of backlash if they began to be so against words. And at the end of the day, this man chose to marry someone who he knew was doing these things online. And so I guess to me it's like, yes, you should stand up for your wife, but also don't be surprised when people have this type of commentary about your life. These videos they made are half a decade old at this point. So what do you think? Do you find this change in iDub's temperament to be genuine? Do you think that he's just moving with the status quo? Also, let me know what you think about Froggy. I think that that situation was totally mishandled. I think it was very unprofessional. But as always, I do want to thank you guys for watching today's video, dropping a like and subscribing. But as you guys know, it's Benny Boy the Tan Superman and some other former commentary YouTubers out here need to be covered. So I'm out. Peace!